Hello everyone, welcome to Geology Concepts. Uh, I'm here with uh, another set of discussion from previous year questions and this time I'm going to discuss questions from sedimentology. While collecting the questions from past eight years for sedimentology, I have come to know that it, in, it needs a very important topic because there are more than 40 questions in just eight years. So you can see on an average, there were five questions every year from sedimentology encompassing from MSQ, MCQ and NAT. So I would highly recommend that you pay very at much attention to this topic while you know preparing because this indeed will fetch you more than 10 marks in your exam. So that's, that's a huge number from just one subject. If, you, if you're able to score more than 10 marks, then you're good to go, right? So please pay attention to sedimentology whenever you're studying or uh, solving any question, okay? And for my discussion, I would take two parts to record this uh, session because uh, it's it's for me, it's quite tough to record in, a, in one go because as I've mentioned, there are more than 40 questions and then I would not be able to uh, make you understand each and every question in detail. So I will, I will keep it in two parts. So in the first part, I will uh, try to answer more, about 15 questions or so. And in the next one, the uh, same number will be discussed, right? So let's get started. Uh, the chronology will be in the, in the reverse, more or less, but uh, yeah, it doesn't matter, right? So questions are more or less from the same topic. So let's get started. Uh, first question is, it says, which one of the following must have a thickness less than one centimeter? All right. So it's a very direct, straight, pretty, uh, you know, straightforward question. We have been given four options here, lamina, bed, stratum, and layer. So if I were to arrange these uh, with the thickest first, I would say C as in stratum because it's a thick layer or set of layers. Then you, you will have D, which is, of course, a group of uh, different beds. Then you will have beds, that is B, and last, that is laminations or lamina, which is usually less than a centimeter or 10 millimeter. Right. So the correct answer here would be lamina, of course, which is less than one centimeter in thickness. So lamina is the correct answer here. Next is from the classification of sandstone and uh, limestone. So you see two options here, lithic arenite and arcosic vacke. These are from the Petty Johns classification of sandstone and P and Q, packstone and grainstone are the classification of limestone and that to the Dunham's classification. So for your reference, I have put both the classifications here, looking at which you can see, clearly see that it was indeed a direct question as well, right? So uh, if you talk about the pack stone, it's, it's a limestone first. So we'll have to refer to this Dunham classification and pack stone we see here, it, it is something which has mud, okay? So it, it must be four, okay? P must be related to four because option three says no mud. So that's not correct for packstone. Rather, it's correct for the grainstone, which is both of which are grain supported, but grainstone does not contain mud. Okay. So P relates to four and Q relates to three. Then we are left with R and S. Lithic arenite. So lithic arenite we see in this classification somewhere here, which says it has less than 15% metrics. This dimension here shows the percentage variation of metrics and which which is clearly less than 15 in the case of lithic arenite so option a must be related to r and also it has more than 25 percent of rock fragments that you can read along this axis here so we are left with only option two that relates to s because of course vacay contains more than 15 percent metrics anything above this 15 percent is is vacay and also it contains 25 percent or more than 25 percent feldspar as it is Arcosic. Okay, so the correct order should be four, three, one, two, uh, which is option number A. Okay. Next, again from the same concept, the Dunham's classification uh, for limestone. Okay, so it says there is a limestone which contains lime mud. Okay. Now, once it's it's clear that it contains lime mud, then it cannot be grainstone. Okay, so we can rule out this one and around 25% of allochems. Allochems that uh, we can say uh, these are the external components that get trapped while formation of limestone. 
and these can be you know intra class or 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 fossil uh, remains oids peloids all of these are allochems which are transported from from somewhere else okay which are separated from each other now now if you see that it contains lime mud and around 25% of allochems so it it must be a wax stone which contains more than 10% of grains okay so 25% is definitely more than 10% and hence it should be a wax stone so the correct answer here would be a wax stone okay the next is again from the petty jones classification of sandstone which we have seen already so it's an msq here okay so more than one can be correct let's see uh, following are the st uh, statements regarding types of sandstone which is or are the correct statements out of the following okay first statement says arcos contains more than 25% feldspar this is absolutely correct arcos is defined in in the same manner that it has it contains more than 25% of feldspar everything beyond this is arcos okay gray wacke contains more than 90% matrix this is not true this is absolutely not true gray wacke is is somewhere here which contains about 15% of matrix not more than 90% okay lith arenite contains more than 25% lithic fragment that's again true lithic arenite it contains more than 25% lithic fragments in the same manner as arcosic feldspar contains more than 25% of feldspar so c is absolutely correct here and last quartz arenite contains more than 95% quartz that's also absolutely correct because quartz arenite you can see plots somewhere here near to the quartz where quartz is more than 95% in it so the correct answer here here will be a c and d moving on uh we have another question from this is again an msq and this one is from the sedimentary environments okay so it's it, it says which of the following features or structures form in a marine environment okay so let's see first option it says lateral accretionary surfaces so it's ideally not to be true because this is a typical feature of a meandering channel when a meandering channel migrates laterally or horizontally it creates this laterally accretionary surfaces which are also called as shoestring features sometimes so it's typical of a fluvial environment uh, but if we try to correlate then they can be found in a paleo marine environment but uh, as per as per an ideal definition or uh, appropriate definition i would not say a to be correct so a is is a typical feature of fluvial environment for that matter hamoki cross stratification this is absolutely correct this is a uh, kind of special type of cross stratification which you see in a storm environment hamoki is a is a, a shape uh, hamoki and swale which is typical of a storm environment which is definitely forms in marine environment so b is absolutely correct then herringbone is again a tidal environment feature and tidal is all together comes from the marine environment only so c is also correct here and then barkanoids this is not true because this is an wind feature or an aeolian environment feature okay so b and c will be the correct answer here okay next again from marine environment it asks which of the marine environments is the shallowest which is not very deep so for that you can refer to this oceanic division in which you can see this one is the littoral zone which is very close to the surface then this wide one and slightly deeper than littoral is the neritic zone starting from here to to somewhere here so that's neritic then you have bethyl and then finally the abyssal so if i were to again uh, organize these with respect to their increasing depth so i would put littoral at first then it will be neritic then there will be bethyl and then last it will be abyssal so the shallowest is littoral hence the bombay or b option is correct here okay find the correct statement out of the following again this is from the sedimentary structures okay first option says convolute lamine form by desiccation this is not true desiccation is something which forms this cinerisis or desiccation cracks in which upper part of mud gets uh dry and it just expands to form these cracks it does not have anything anything to do with convolute bedding 
Similarly, convolute lamination is a penny contemporaneous structure which forms while the lithification has not happened and rock undergoes some kind of deformation at that time. So you you tend to get uh, folded layers before lithification. So they are not in any ways correlated to each other. Similarly, load cast is an erosional structure. Not true. It's a depositional structure rather. Once or when there is a deposition of heavier sand particles onto the soft mud, then this mud tends to get loaded by these sand particles and hence they form this load cast. Okay, So they are uh, anyways depo uh, depositional structures. Prod mark is found at the bottom of a bed. This is absolutely correct because prod mark is a type of sole mark. And sole mark structures are always formed at the base of any bed or the channel bed. So C is absolutely correct. Then, of course, D must not be correct. Wave ripple occurs at the top of a turbidite deposit. See, wave ripples are a low energy condition deposits or uh, structures. And turbidite deposits formed under slightly higher energy condition in the marine environment. Hence, they cannot be found over there. Wave ripples are small stru scale structures which are formed in a low energy condition of a channel bed. So D is absolutely not correct here. C is the correct answer. Moving on, this is again an MSQ. See, I have not even come to 2020. I'm just in between 22 and 21 of a question paper. And I have, I think, discussed more than seven, eight questions already. So you can see the importance of this subject. And uh, it's not very tough, I would say. I mean, uh, looking at other subjects, you might find those difficult, but this is not that much difficult. So it's a very uh, positive opportunity for you to, you know, uh, score from sedimentology. So just, just pay attention here. All right. It's an MSQ again. It says a marine organic rich black shale with tiny pyrite crystals. Pyrite is sulfide of iron shows complete absence of body or trace fossils. So this condition has been given to us that in which condition the deposition has taken place. And now we have to uh, choose the correct statements regarding this. The so first statement says the sediments were deposited in low energy condition. This seems to be true because we can see that it's a deposition of tiny pyrite crystals. So small features or small crystals could also deposit. Hence, it must have been a low energy condition. Second option says the deposition took place in disoxic or anoxic condition. Both of these mean less or no ox oxygen condition. Okay, so this is again true because of the presence of this sulfide ore of iron. Because if there would have been higher oxygen or uh, oxygen uh, concentration, then it would have converted to iron oxide Fe Fe two O three uh, in higher oxygen condition. But yes. If there are still the sulfides present of iron, then there must have been this reducing environment or the lower oxygen levels. So B is correct. Rate of sedimentation was high. We cannot comment on this, the rate of sedimentation. We can actually not comment that what must have been there. So we uh, do not. Uh, so that's absolutely not correct here. And the option D, the environment was stressful for survival of living organisms. So, yeah, this again seems to be true because it says as there, there is a, this absence of body or trace fossils. So, of course, it was uh, stressful for living organisms to survive. Hence, we could not find any traces here. So, so the correct answer for this seems to be A, B and D. Moving on, a similar type of questions from sedimentary environments or it's, it's more inclined towards geomorphology, we can say. But yeah, we can discuss it. Uh, it's again an MSQ. More than one can be correct here. First option says attrition is more dominant in aeolian than in glacial. This is absolutely true because in aeolian environment, erosion happens by two main processes, abrasion and attrition. And in glacial, abrasion is, is there, but along with that, plucking is more dominant than attrition. So A is absolutely correct. Option B says centrifugal force drives the sediment laden water 
outward when the river channel meanders this is absolutely true from the perspective of simple physics as well like if you have a meandering channel like this and the water that is sediment laden that it contains a lot of sediments will always push the sediment laden water outwards because the centrifugal force on every body acts tangentially so this this happens to be true here as well option c says u shaped valley is a common fluvial geomorphic feature this is absolutely not correct because u shaped valley are glacial geomorphic features last is the downstream water velocity in a river channel increases upward from the channel bed towards the water surface so it says that if you look at the velocity profile of a channel bed it should be something like this like the velocity should be higher at the top and as you move downwards it should reduce or come down to zero and that's absolutely correct this is the real profile of velocity uh, in in a river channel bed so again the uh, uh, correct answer here is a b and d moving on another msq question choose the correct statements out of the following first says shoreline shifts landward during transgression this is absolutely correct transgression is a phenomena uh, in marine environment in which sea level rises and because of this sea level change the shoreline shoreline is uh, is is basically that contact between sea and land so that contact sh uh, shifts towards land so that's absolutely correct like if if i draw something like this which shows this is a sea part and this is a land part and at one point of time the sea level or the shoreline is here but during transgression the sea level will rise and of course the shoreline will shift towards landward so this is absolutely the opposite of regression in which the sea level falls and shoreline shifts towards seaward so a is absolutely correct and at the same time b becomes wrong c says delta deposits preserve the record of transgression uh now delta deposits delta is is a place where river meets the ocean okay but we are talking about the transgression and that does not affect uh mainly the delta deposits right so c is is absolutely not correct here incised river valley forms because of transgression this is again not true because transgression is is a very basic phenomena in which just the sea level rises and uh kind of uh, lower energy condition deposits deposit at the shoreline not these type of higher energy condition deposits such as incised river valley or delta deposits so the correct answer here would be just a all right now this is an nat question not not a very tough it's a very simple common sense question it says during a concretionary growth of a spherical grain of radius 2 angstrom the rate of change of surface area with respect to change in radius of the grain is so there is this spherical grain of 2 angstrom radius and during its concretionary growth concretionary growth meaning a layer by layer growth growth in a concentric pattern what should be the change of its what, what should be the rate of the change of its surface area with respect to the change in radius so i can put if its surface area is sa i can put this into the derivative with respect to radius right and since it's a sphere i can put its surface area as 4 pi r square with respect to its radius and once i solve this derivative it simply becomes 8 pi r because this 2 gets jumped out it becomes pi r okay so now i just have to calculate the value of this so i will put 8 pi as 3.14 and radius is given as 2 angstrom that means 2 raised to the power minus 10 meters or better i can multiply this by 100 to make it into centimeters okay so this whole becomes 10 raised to the power minus 8 itself which has been asked in the question so i will just have to you know calculate this value which is 16 times 3.14 now if i happen to calculate this uh, it should be something close to 50 but yeah let's see yeah it's it's about 50.24 centimeters uh, or better to say 10 raised to a minus 8 but it has been given already okay so this was a very simple direct uh, question 
no need of sedimentology knowledge as such but yeah it was a common sense question another simple question uh you can put it in sedimentary or stratigraphy doesn't matter but yeah the question is is quite uh, simple uh no need to read out that whole thing i can just explain you this that there was this time once the structural terrace started to form okay so it started to make its uh, base in three episodes so first episode was from this to this when t3 terrace was formed then it was t2 and then finally t1 and at present it said this water level so if the river tries to incise even more it's its own channel bed then there can be uh, the formation of another terrace okay so this whole process took about 30000 years from l1 to the present day and from l1 to the present day the elevation changed is 300 meters so we just have to calculate that rate that with what rate this change must have happened so it's a very simple question now that the change was of course of 300 meters or we can say 300000 mm in 30000 year because we have been asked this in millimeters per year so we can simply now cancel this 1000 and this 10 so we get the rate as 10 mm per year so this must have happened with an average rate of 10 mm per year so it's a very very simple question again okay all right now moving on next question is in clastic sediments the correct order of decreasing grain size a very simple direct question from the adan wentworth scale in which you are even not <clears throat> asked the values of these grain sizes you just have to uh, you know arrange them in a decreasing grain size okay so if we put uh these according to the adan wentworth scale we put boulder at first then there is cobble then pebble then granule then sand then silt and last the clay so if we put these in a decreasing grain size so boulder should be at the uh, at first that's absolutely correct then pebble that's right then silt no silt cannot be placed before sand so a is is not correct granule cannot be put before pebble this is not correct cobble then granule then silt and then clay this is absolutely correct granule then again cannot be put before pebble so c is absolutely correct here okay it was a right question from sedimentary structures so we have primary sedimentary structures and we have to match them with their corresponding process so for for that i have put these images here so that you can just have an idea about these first option says asymmetric ripples now ripples can be asymmetric or symmetric based on the motion that is present at the you know uh, bed channel bed so all in all both of these form due to this transportation of channel bed load okay so how this transportation happens decides what type of ripple will be formed so p can be related to 2 here okay dish and pillar structure dish and pillar structure is is a water escape structure so it's not only the uh, not only dish and pillar structure that can be formed by water escape but there are numerous such structures what happens is uh, due to the compaction and uh, overburden water escapes and once the water escapes it just leaves out its, its trace in in form of different structures so dish and pillar is is a uh, one type of such structure so dish and pillar can be uh, definitely be related to water escape then there is fluid cast fluid cast is again something which forms at the base of you know a uh, channel bed and that happens or you know forms by scouring of turbulent eddy so turbulent eddy forms this strong narrow current of water which is very otherwise very uh, strong so it just scours the soft bed so that it it creates this long kind of ridge and once it's filled and overturned it appears to be a like a flute so uh, that's how it forms and then finally wavy bedding can be related to option 3 uh, which says deposition from alternate traction and suspension load so wavy bedding bedding basically has 
two type of uh, sediment size included said sand and the clay particles so because of the traction you get a uh, larger sand particles and from suspension you get smaller sand or clay particles so once they are you know uh, uh, deposited together you get this wavy bedding okay so all you know you, your option uh, a correct answer will be bombay here uh, as you will match all these options okay all right next is choose the correct statement uh, from the following it's an ms not not mc uh, not msq it's an mcq so it says porosity of weathered granite is less than a uh, crystalline granite this is not true if the granite is weathered so of course it will be having higher porosity than the crystalline one weathering means some part has been removed coarse sands have high porosity and high permeability this is absolutely correct this is the basic property of sand that the grains are larger and because of which the pore size between them becomes larger and they are well connected hence they have high porosity or high permeability but for the same reason shale does not have the high permeability or clay particles does not have high permeability because the grains are not connected well connected to each other although there are numerous uh, sorry pores but they are not connected uh, the pores are small but they are not connected so clay can have high porosity but cannot have high permeability so c is not correct again groundwater does not fluctuate with water recharge this is again not true whether you recharge or discharge the water from an aquifer water table or groundwater table must fluctuate okay cannot be true so correct option here will be bombay in this question it says there are five beds pqrst we have to identify the correct type of unconformity so we can see that s and t are sedimentary sequence deposited younger than pqr because s and t are horizontal but p q and r are inclined or at a high angle to s and t so that's absolutely correct that s and t are the younger beds deposited after pqr and they share this oblique relation hence we can say that it's an angular unconformity because pqr are the beds which are inclined to s okay and such type of unconformity is always an angular unconformity now last question for 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 this part uh, is an msq again <laughs> So first option says orthogenic minerals formed during diagenesis of sandstone. This is correct. Now, what is orthogenesis? See, orthogenesis is a process uh, in which new minerals might form during diagenesis of sandstone. So there are a lot of reactions taking place while there is diagenesis of sandstone. And because of which, if some minerals are not stable at, at the, those temperature pressure conditions, they convert to something else or to a new mineral which was not present at all. So that is possible during diagenesis heavy minerals in sandstone are good indicators of providence this is also correct now heavy minerals meaning uh apatite or titanium titanite such minerals which are heavy with their weight and also they have you know they can stay they are more sorry less prone to weathering so they will stay in in the sedimentary rock starting from their source or the provenance so of course if they are present they can be served as a very good indicators of the provenance or the source of the sedimentary rock an arcos is mineralogically more mature than a quadrilinite this is not true because an arcos is is a sandstone which is more abundant in feldspar which is you know a lighter mineral or uh, uh, which is you know easily weathered or eroded mineral but quartz is something which is strong so a quartz can be a, a, a rock which is you know abundant in quartz can be more mature than an arcos but vice versa is not true d matrix in sandstone may form by post deposition infiltration and or orthogenic filling this is again correct this is the same thing i mentioned orthogenesis is a process which happens in diagenesis and that can provide some minerals to be present as a matrix in a sandstone and also in a sandstone matrix can form by post deposition infiltration that means deposition has happened now something comes from the outside 
and gets deposited as a matrix or to, to be served as a matrix. So that can also be possible because while deposition has happened and lithification is going on or diagenesis is going on, it's an open system. Material can come in and go out. So a proper exchange can happen. Hence, these kind of things can very well happen uh, during diagenesis. All right. So the correct answer here becomes A, B and D. So this is all from from this uh, uh, in this in this video. I will continue uh, the next set of questions in the next part. And uh, just let me know if I have missed any of the questions from any of the papers. Uh, once you see uh, both the parts, because uh, there are a lot of questions, I I I might miss out on something. But uh, if I have, just let me know. Okay. So yeah, thank you, thank you so much. All the best.